his life and plight. I believe the psalmist here, and this is my personal belief, I believe the psalmist is reminding us to be reminded of some things. To be in our memory, I believe this is what Joseph did while he planted seeds all along the way. Okay, this is my own personal belief. Why would it be here? Why would it be in Psalm 105? Right in the middle of this, if it wasn't some context to it. Are you with me? So what are we going to do? What are we going to do when the hard times hit? Let me, let me tell you something. I can probably go across the room and I can probably say that your siblings did not throw you in some pit to leave you to die. Maybe you did. I don't know. But that's probably the case, right? You probably left you in a, he said, oh, they left me in, a, in the tree house too long. No, <laughs> he was left in the pit to die, forsaken by his brothers. Then he was sold into slavery. They knew it was coming. They sold him into the Midianites' hands. Then he went to a wicked man's house with a wicked woman there, faced false accusations, and got falsely accused and got thrown in prison falsely. Anybody, anybody done that in their life yet? That's where Joseph was. And then to top it all off, the guy that he said to his dreams, hey, when's you going to die? You're going to get hung. The other one's going to go out, and you're going to do this. You're going to prosper. By the way, remember, remember me when you go out and prosper. And he forgot. Two years. So all that Joseph's been through, and yet God says, listen to me, he was a prosperous man. God was with him all along the way. Can I remind us today of this truth? God is with you all along the way. And he wants you to be prosperous, but I believe right here where it says, moreover, he called, sent a man, even Joseph, I believe we need to look back to what he was talking about in this context. And number one, look at it, verse number one. Oh, give, what's the next word? I believe Joseph planted seeds of gratitude. I believe that no matter what shape Joseph was in, you say, can you prove that? No, but it never said he complained one time. It never said that he was unthankful. It never said that, well, you know, why am I in here, God? It just said that he was prosperous while he was in there. And I think one of the prosperous things that this psalmist has pointed out to us, mentioning Joseph here in five verses, his life, goes back to verse number one and says, the reason Joseph could do that is because I wanted to give, he gave thanks. I'm not saying that that's proof. I'm just saying that's my opinion. But it's a good seed to plant, is it not? (laughs) Even if that's not true, gratitude is a wonderful seed to plant while you're going through storms of life. I think Paul said, in everything give, for this is the in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen? And so God used Joseph's life here, I believe, as a picture of preparing the field, planting the seeds, producing the harvest that God desires you to have, even when things are tough. And he said the very first thing, be thankful. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. I wonder how many times that phrase is said just here in the book of Psalms alone. A lot. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. How many of that, that's hard to do when hard times hit. Be honest. It's hard to do, isn't it? God, I thank you for this. God, I thank you for this trial. Those words don't come out of our mouth as much as they should. But that's what God, that's the seed that we need to plant, a seed of gratitude. Why? Because the Lord gave, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm grateful, God. I know I might not understand it. Logic tells me why. Reason says what? But thankfulness says, I trust you. I'm thankful. Obviously, there's something in it for me that I need to get out. I believe somewhere along the way, Joseph planted seeds of thankfulness, even after he'd been forsaken, forgotten, falsely accused. If we are ever going to have a prosperous, prosperous harvest, we must plant seeds of gratitude. In everything, give thanks. I got a good check. Woo! I got a bad check. Woo! I'm well and alive and, and kicking. Woo! I'm not so well. And I know others who aren't kicking. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the life they had. Thank you for the time I knew them. 
So many things to be thankful for. Amen. A thankful Christian is a prosperous Christian. Number two, look at also in verse number one. Not only is there thanks, there's prayer. You say, really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that simple? Yeah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. What? Call upon his name. What? In that prayer? What do we do when we talk to God? We call upon his name. Oh, Lord, are you listening? Oh, my. I, I don't know how God's people get through it without praying through it. If you haven't fallen on your knees and you're in hard times, get on your knees right now. Get on your knees after church. Get on your knees tomorrow morning. Get on your knees and say, thank you, Lord. Now help me get through this. <laughs> Sustain me. Get me in the yoke so that I may have your strength. Because I'm struggling here. We're facing whatever much time should be spent in prayer. Let me give you a couple men who spent much time in prayer. Well, we see Jacob's victory of faith could not have been gained without an all-night prayer wrestling. Or all-night wrestling. Amen? Wrestled all night with the Lord. Why? Because he wanted an answer. He didn't want to leave. And yet we just say, sometimes it takes a little bit more time in prayer. God wants to see how serious you are. Amen? God's acquaintance is not made by pop calls. God does not bestow his gifts on the casual or hasty comers and goers. Much with God alone is the secret of knowing him and the influence with him. He yields to the persistency of a faith that knows him. He bestows the richest gifts upon those who declare the desire and for the appreciation of those gifts by the constancy as well as the earnestness of their opportunity. That was E.M. Bounds. Paul prayed day and night. It took time from very important interest for Daniel to pray three times a day. While we have no specific account of these Bible saints and how long they spent in prayer, yet the indications that they consumed much time in prayer, and on some occasions, long seasons of praying was their custom. You say, well, I don't have that kind of time to pray. Can I say something? You don't not have that time to pray. It's very important. Archbishop Layton was so much in prayer alone with God that he seemed to be in perpetual meditation. Prayer and praise were his business and his pleasure, says the biographer. Bishop Ken was so much with God that his soul was said to be God enamored. Boy, that's what we need to get, God enamored. Not Facebook enamored. Sometimes get your face out of, his, out of, out of, your, out of your Facebook and get your face in his book, amen? Get your face in his, with his face. He was with God before the clock struck three every morning. Bishop Ashbury said, I propose to rise at four o'clock as often as I can and spend two hours of, with God in prayer and meditation. We're not willing to do that. But we're willing to wake up at 4 o'clock to go plant another seed. We're willing to stay till midnight to get the job done, but we're not willing to spend a couple hours in prayer saying, God, I need, I need the right seed. I'm just saying. Samuel Rutherford, the fragrance of whose piety is still rich, rose at 3 o'clock in the morning to meet God in prayer. 3 o'clock in the morning. Joseph Aline rose at 4 o'clock for his business of praying till 8. If he heard other tradesmen, listen to this. If he heard other tradesmen plying their business before he was up, he would exclaim, Oh, how this shames me. Doth not my master deserve more than theirs? <sighs> That's convicting to me. John Welch. The Scottish preacher thought the day ill spent if he did not spend eight to ten hours in prayer each day. He kept a plaid, uh, a plaid that would wrap around him, wrap around that. <laughs> he kept a plaid that might wrap himself when he rose tonight to pray. His wife would complain when she found him lying on the ground weeping. He would reply, Oh, woman, I have the souls of 3,000 to answer for, and I don't know how well it is going with them. Talk about a man earnest in prayer. I'm just saying, don't you think that for 11 years in the house of Potiphar, two years in a house of prison, 
All those times growing up with his brothers, don't you think Joseph found some seeds of prayer? That he planted them along the way, and that's why he was prosperous? Could it be? That because he was a thankful man, and that's why the psalmist said, oh, give thanks. And then later on he says, by, by the way, Joseph. <laughs> so we have thanks, we have prayer. Number three, you know, along with thanks and prayer, they're singing. Look at verse two. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. And God just sometimes just wants to hear his people sing. Remember Paul and Silas? Remember what? Remember how they prospered just because they sang? Let me remind you how they prospered. They were in prison, bound fast, and they began to sing. And the prison doors began to rattle, and the chains fell off. Amen? Hey, you want your prison doors to rattle? You want your chains of life, of, 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 of whatever it is you're going through to, to fall off? Start singing. God wants to hear you sing. He loves God's people singing. Let me ask you today. Do you have a song during the hard times? Do you have a song during the hard times? Is there something you can sing? As we sat around the, the bed of my dad before he took his last breath just this past Wednesday. I grabbed everybody's hand and I said, let's sing. His wife said, yes, thank you. She was so appreciative because it was so silent, so emotional, as you can imagine. And the song that came to my mind was rejoice in the Lord. He makes no mistakes. I had just got done preaching rejoice and pass it on. Did I not? So now I better live it. That's, that's hard. You know, God tries this old preacher. Every time I preach something, he tests me to see if I really meant it. And here I had to rejoice around that where most people would probably say, what are you doing? You, you, how can you do that? Because I want to give thanks, I want to pray, and I want to sing unto him. God, thank you for the years, the 70 years I got. Well, I didn't have 70 years. Thank you for his 70 years. I got 47 with him. Thank you for the 47 years I had with my dad. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful. And now I'm going to sing. Oh, rejoice in the Lord. He makes no mistakes. He knows at the end of each path that I take. He knew that. For when I am tried and purified, I shall come forth as gold. What's that, prosperous? Prosperous. Number four, I'm almost done. There were seeds of seeking. Look at verse number three. I'm almost done. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them, there's that word rejoice again, that seek the Lord. Verse four, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face. Forevermore. Hey, the word seek here means a frequency. It means not occasionally. It means diligently seeking his face. Why? Because it's tough right now. Don't you think jo Joseph in the prison, it was tough. But he said, Lord, I seek your face. Seek the Lord in his strength. Why? Because my strength is weak. Seek the Lord in his face forevermore, he says. Three times it was said that the Lord was with Joseph. I wonder if the, because Joseph was seeking him. I wonder if the Lord doesn't spend much time with you because you don't spend much time with him. I'm just saying. I'm not saying he leaves you. I'm just saying that close fellowship, that frequency. I don't want a little talk with Jesus. I want a sweet hour of prayer. I don't want a little occasional attendance to his meetings. I want them all. Amen. I don't want to get, just get some Bible reading in. I want to get it all read. Amen. I don't want just some time in this. I want it all because that's what I seek. What do you seek? Seek his face. Seek his strength. And then lastly, and I'm done here, there was a remembering. Look at verse 5. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done. 
his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Look at page number 478. I'm sorry. When you find 478, back up and go to 456. Because I don't know what 478 is. Page 456. I want you to notice something. What Joseph chose. Listen to me. What Joseph chose to remember. Are you with me today? Can I tell you, you can choose what you remember. Was Joseph handed some injustices, yes or no? Yeah, did he choose to remember those? Doesn't say that, that he did. Was Joseph tr treated with some unfair, uh, unfairness, whatever you want to, was he, was he? Yes, he was. Was he done wrong? Yes, but he doesn't remember any of those. You know what he remembers? God's wonderful works. That's what it says here. Remember his marvelous works, his wonders, and the judgments of his mouth. Let me tell you something. When you get to that point, God says, prosperous. It's not about what they did to me. Even when they came to him, when he could have killed them, right? He said, you meant it unto evil, but God meant it unto good. And he forgave his brethren. Oh, my, what an act here of the Christ-likeness of Joseph. To forgive his brothers when they didn't deserve any of it. And they knew it. And yet he still forgave them. Why? Because something about remembering. You know what? We can remember the dots of everybody in this room. And all their problems. I mean, I can just go across the room. I don't know some of you, but I can, I can point out that lady right there's dots. She's, she's got about a half one. My wife. I'm being, I'm being facetious. Now, the one next to you, Lacey, my oldest, she's got a legal-sized pad full of them. All kinds of problems. Just stick around. You'll see all her problems. She's got them, man. Her biggest one is me. <laughs> and her friend that she keeps friendship there, Allison, I mean, come on, Allison. Many problems. All right. Misery loves company right there. <laughs> What I'm saying is, I don't, take, I don't want to take the time for that. Why? Because I want to be prosperous. And me thinking about all the injustices done to me, and you thinking about all the injustices done to you, and all the pain, and all the hurt, and all the heartache, God says, remember to count blessings. Right? Count your many blessings. Here, read it with me. Ready? Read it with me. Ready? On verse 1. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost. You ever been there? It's all gone. It's, it doesn't matter anymore. What does it say? Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Let me tell you something. It will not only surprise you, it will take you a while to get to that list. Because really, honestly, God's been good. Amen. And we remember all the bad and we forget all the good. And I don't know why, but... I'm today, I'm just saying that we need to plant the seed of remembering the good. Amen. Look at verse 2. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Anybody like that? <laughs> All right. Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Same thing. Count your many blessings. Every doubt will fly. And you will be. That's why a singing Christian, you can't keep a singing Christian down. Because there's a song in his heart. Verse 4. So amid the conflict. Mm, boy, there's conflicts in life, isn't there? Rather great or small. They can come small or great. Do not be discouraged. Why? God is over all. Count your many blessings. Angels. There's those angels. Will descend or attend. I'm sorry. And descend. <laughs> Help and comfort give you till your journey's end. Count your blessings and name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. And you know what? That is planting seeds of prosperity. The most prosperous Christian in this room is one who is thankful. The most prosperous Christian in this room is one who knows how to get a hold of God in prayer. 
The most proper, prosperous Christian in this room is one that knows how to sing even though they're hurting and give God all the glory for it. The most prosperous person in this room is one who seeks the Lord diligently, frequently. And the most prosperous per Christian in this room is one who remembers not the bad. That's easy. That's easy. And you know what it does? It ruins your life when you think of bad all the time. You can't go to church with that guy because he did this and she did that. I just can't do it. Remember God's goodness. Verse 16, look at it again. Psalm 105 will be done. Right here in the midst of these five verses are at the beginning of this chapter, these five verses, in the midst, now in the middle, it says, Moreover, he called for a famine. He broke the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, even Joseph. Why is that there? Why, why was that plugged in to the same context of giving thanks and singing and praying? Because here's my belief. I believe God is telling us through the psalmist, that's what Joseph did. I'm just saying, I believe that's what Joseph did. I believe that while he was in prison and while he was in these tough times, he was giving God glory, praising him, seeking him, praying, thanking him, doing the things that he's always supposed to do. And you can't keep a guy like that down. Pretty soon, God's just going to say, whoop, he's the one. He's the reason why I saved much people alive. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you today. Thank you for your word. Lord, it is the word of God that is quick and powerful, not my word, but your word. I pray today that they heard your word today. Through my word, somewhere along there, they heard from you. That all your people here in this room heard from you today. And we would go off and plant these seeds. And It's time to plant now. It's time to plant now, not tomorrow, not next week. It's time to plant now the spiritual seeds of thankfulness, gratitude, prayer, singing, a spirit that's remembering the good, not the bad, forgetting those things which are behind, pressed toward the mark. I pray, Lord, that we would do that today. Now, Father, with our heads bowed, with our eyes closed, I want to ask.